also a teenager. <laughs> so when Miro and I were asked to give this talk about education, of course we said yes. You see, we've been practicing saying yes to everything. And we do say yes to just about everything now. You see, it started in 2008, just before my mom and I left the States. I was only 10 years old then, but I remember it like it was yesterday. My mom owned a small design agency, and she worked a lot. In fact, I would tell her more often than she'd like to remember, Mom, you never spend any time with me. You're always working. I could tell that my words upset her, but it was how I felt. That year, the California economy crashed, and I could tell that my mom was worried about her business. And I was with her in her office one night when she turned to me and said the most incredible thing. Miro, let's get rid of everything. Let's go have an adventure. Let's live out of our backpacks. Let's head south and see where the road takes us. And let's say yes to everything. I looked at her and said an emphatic yes. <laughs> and that was that. That was the beginning of our pact to say yes to everything. And it's become a lifestyle for us. But saying yes to everything is not always the simplest path or the easiest way to grow up. It comes with a lot of uncertainty and requires a lot of trust. But my mom's a researcher, so even though she's got that totally spontaneous side to her, I know she always backs it up with a deep investigation. So when my mom said yes to giving this TED Talk, she went to a frenzy researching, and finally she said to me with terror in her eyes, what could we possibly say about education in front of a group of educators at a TEDx education conference focused on education? <laughs> yes, it's true. After I told her to calm down, and she finally did, she turned to me and said, we have to reframe the conversation. We can't and won't talk about education. We need to change the conversation from one about education to one about learning. You see, we have transformed ourselves into natural learners, and we do it through something we call world schooling. So with every adventure, every place we go, and every new experience, we have the opportunity to learn something. And for us, learning has become very active. It's interesting because before we left on our travels, I had no doubt that one year of travel would be way more powerful than fifth grade. I had no doubt my son would learn more than he could ever, ever even think about in fifth grade. In fact, during that first year of travel, it far exceeded my expectations. We overcame so many things like fear, how to trust ourselves and the world around us, and how to negotiate everything in a foreign language. Actually, what we were doing is we were discovering that we had new interests that were just blossoming through travel. That first year, we traveled through Mexico, Belize, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and Guatemala. We both practiced saying yes to everything, oftentimes causing us to change plans and go in the opposite direction. Often we'd laugh about it, but together we started to enjoy the freedom saying yes brought, mm -hmm. the uncertainty of never knowing, and the adventures. Then, just eight months into our travels, I turned to my mom and I said, let's continue doing this forever. And she just smiled and looked at me, and she knew exactly what I was up to. And after all, she was kind of obliged. She just looked at me and said, yes. We talked like the night we talked in our office just before we left the States. I was certainly excited about the prospect, traveling the world, living out of our backpacks, having no permanent address, nor the need to shower daily. I loved that I didn't need to put on clean clothes every morning or go to bed at a certain time. I loved all the new things we were learning and all the adventures we were having. But most of all, I loved that I didn't have to go back to school. So after saying yes to all of those things, I realized that my job as a parent was to decide how I would educate my son. So through my mad research and Google skills, of course, I discovered there was something called unschooling. And it's a, a way, it's a philosophy of learning naturally uh, from the world around you and living as if school doesn't exist. Yes, we can do that. Unschooling encourages the learner to dive deep into their interests, and we were already doing that, so yes.
The role of the parent is to support and facilitate the learner. Yes. And the parent and the child co-create a partnership in life and in learning. Yes. And the incredible part, as I said, is that we were already doing it and it was working. In fact, the first year I watched Miro absorb Spanish like a sponge, where I could barely say the word gracias without mispronouncing it. I have never studied Spanish. In seven years of living and traveling through Latin America, I have never once opened a textbook or attended a formal language class. But now I'm fluent. Near the beginning of our trip, I would learn by playing football and connecting with the local kids, but as time went on, I began to learn naturally from all kinds of people around us, from the people in the streets, in restaurants, on television. I learned way more by listening to people than I ever could by reading from a book. I studied their accents and speech, and soon, with the language and context to my experiences, I was able to understand the people around us, and they could understand me too. In contrast, my mom has had a rough time trying to learn Spanish, and I guess making me the translator over the last seven years has also helped my language learning. Muy bien. <laughs> <laughs> so one particular afternoon during our first year of travel, I began to take notice of all the natural learning that was happening just through travel. I thought about one of our adventures where we dove deep into a cave in Belize. We, we went down one mile deep in this cave in Belize through the uh, caverns. It was amazing. My mom can never remember or pronounce the name of the cave, but it's called <laughs> Aktun Tunichul Miknal, which means the cave of the crystal sepulcher. So this is a place at National Geographic called the world's most sacred cave. And in fact, our experiences were sacred too. Miro and I swam very carefully and waded past the stalactites and stalagmites, the scattering of pottery shards, until we finally got to the main uh, arena, the main area, the thing that we came to see. And it was a 2,000-year-old remains of a Mayan sacrificial female. Her, her bones completely um, uh, sparkled from the years of crystallization. It was incredible. And after that adventure, Miro and I went back to our hostel, and we researched. We researched deeper into the mythology, deeper into the history, deeper into the archaeology, not because we were told to do so, but because we were so engaged in learning. In fact, Learning was so active for us. Now, as I reflect, I realize that never once had I challenged the idea of education. I always thought it was somebody else's responsibility to educate my son. And in fact, all I wanted for him was to become educated. You know, to me, that's crazy. I realize that through these travel experiences, it was helping me change the conversation to one about education, to one about learning. Now, the only thing I want for my son is for him to grow into the passionate life learner he has become. Education looks like this for us. Developing critical thinking skills, Building a global perspective. See, this is important, that's why it's written down. Becoming sensitive to other worldviews, being inspired to take action, and developing a deep love of learning. So the content of what we're learning keeps changing, but actually the learning remains the same. And world schooling is the vehicle for us, and it's working. Yeah. Although my mom never told me these were the things she wanted for me, we live them. They become a natural part of our daily lives, and we've continued to practice saying yes as we travel and still do to this day. In fact, I would suspect that my mom and I have said yes far more times than the average human, <laughs> all resulting in so many deep learning experiences. For example, around five years ago, we decided to get off the beaten path and travel to a small jungle village in Colombia called San Cipriano. My mom had read about it and thought it'd be an interesting adventure, and we had met a friend who'd wanted to go, and so we said, yes. San Cipriano was very remote, and the driver we hired to take us from Cali drove us to a small road just outside of Buenaventura. This is where we waited and met the driver of our next vehicle, 
a motorcycle-powered cart which was fitted to a set of active train tracks. Are you kidding me? This was how we were getting there? <laughs> the driver told us that we'd be fine, that trains rarely use the tracks anymore. Rarely was the key word here. He told us, but don't worry, if we encounter a train, the tracks should start to rumble and it should give us enough warning. And if that happens, we jump. He showed us how to jump off the side of the cart quickly and told us to hope and pray that we weren't on a bridge or over a river if that happened. <laughs> we loved our stay in San Cibriano. It was quaint and it was our home for the week. We hired the son of the family we were staying with to be our guide as we ventured into the nature reserve each day. We spent the mornings and afternoons hiking into the surrounding jungle, visiting the waterfalls and tubing down rivers. In the evenings, we hung out with the local family that hosted us eating and sharing stories and laughing. But as time went on, we began to learn some things we didn't expect to learn. There was a deep, long-standing local conflict that was always brewing just below the surface. Illegal gold miners were destroying the environment, yet supplying work to a very impoverished community. For years, those that opposed the mining and wanted to preserve the jungle were met only with violence, and according to the family we were staying with, the government completely stayed out of the issue. We heard stories from both perspectives and soon realized that we were in the midst of a very complicated cultural and environmental issue, and that all we could do as outsiders was to listen and empathize. Had I read of this issue in a book or a news article, it would have always remained just somewhere out there, but to me, this experience is more real because it's someplace I've been, someplace I've experienced, and someplace I care about. You know, we have countless stories like this from the seven years of world schooling experiences, deep epiphanies, deep learning that took place in the biggest classroom available to us, the world. Learning in context makes the lessons rich, and the magic ingredient for us is connection. But this journey hasn't been without its challenges. Um, about four years ago, Miro turned 13, and he fell into a state of depression, actually. And we were invited to go back to the United States and speak about world schooling at an alternative education conference. So we received incredible feedback from our presentation and support for the learning. But for us, the single point of clarity was this was the first time Miro was actually able to connect with peers, peers of teens that were unschooled, that were self-directed learners. And we realized the point of clarity was that community was important to him. So what we did is we flew back to Peru. We furiously started planning to make plans to bring a group of self-directed teenage learners to Peru to learn the way that we had been learning through these immersive, really deep, powerful experiences. And we started to facilitate our first temporary learning community for teens. Project World School was born. The first year, we hosted groups of teens in Peru. We explored the ancient archaeological sites of Machu Picchu, Sacsayhuaman, and Ollantaytambo. We cooked the flavors of the Andes, learned how to play the zampona, or the Peruvian pan flute, participated in a traditional despacho ceremony with an Andean elder, and we even visited an indigenous family on their farm in Chinchero to learn about weaving. In addition to the explorations we do in the, world, the external world around us, as a community, we also explore the internal worlds, too. As a community, we step outside of our comfort zones, look at our own relationships to learning, uh, challenge the ideas we once had about the world around us, and challenge the fear that once dictated how we perceive that world. All of this we do in community. In fact, over the last four years, my mom and I have hosted immersive teen learning communities in different places around the world, from Mexico's Maya Riviera to the Ecuadorian coast, to the Amazonian rainforest, and of course, Cusco and Machu Picchu, Peru. In the future, we have our sights on bringing groups of teens and young adults to Argentina, Chile, Bolivia, Guatemala, Poland, and Greece for unique world schooling experiences. We are working to change the conversation about education. We are taking these experiences and encouraging a deep love of learning, and we're looking at the world as the biggest classroom available to us. And we invite you to do so also. So thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm.